everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a very exciting video. This is my October book haul. I had to split it out and keep it separate from my TBR check-in this month because it is my birthday month. And I got a lot of books, 20 to be um, exact. It is October 29th. I'm calling it for the month right here. I don't expect any more books to be arriving. Um, this is it for the month, hopefully. Um, and so let's just get to it, shall we? The first two books I'm going to just show you because I've already talked about them here on my channel. I brought them in in the month of October and I've already read them. And that is um, It Happened One Autumn by Lisa Kleypas. This is a Regency romance, uh, book two in the Wallflower series. Talked about that on my last um, recent reads video. And also, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates. This is nonfiction um, about climate change and solutions to climate change that I really, really enjoyed. Also, recently talked about in my last Recent Reads video. Excellent, excellent books, both of those. So quickly out of the way with those two. The next two books I'm going to show, I've also talked about because they are on my nonfiction November TBR. And that is the book that I received from Britta Bowler on my birthday. This is Under the Sea Wind by Rachel Carson, and Britta and I will be buddy reading this in November. I also picked up, I purchased myself, um, Atlas of Poetic Zoology by Emmanuel Poidibé, and illustrated by Julie Terrazzoni, and translated by Eric Butler. And um, I did also show this on my nonfiction November TBR, but it's so gorgeous that I have to um, just open it up <laughs> and flip through and show you some more pictures because... Yes, we love it. I will also be buddy reading this with Britta in the month of November for nonfiction November. Um, I talked about that on my TBR. So while we have Britta Bowler on the mind, let's show you my new t-shirt. I have no shelf control. This was also gifted to me from Britta for my birthday and I love it very much. So thank you, Britta, again. So now that I have gotten all of that out of the way, let's move on to the next uh, 16 books that I brought into my home um, in the month of October. So like I said, it is my birthday month and I was gifted money and gift cards and all that fun stuff. And I did go on a bit of a spree and most of these are nonfiction. So <laughs> I already set my TBR for nonfiction November, but it's going to be tough. I think there will be some, some books that I substitute in uh, for some of my prompts based on the new books that I borrowed in. So let's see, these are the books. This is The Ungrateful Refugee, What Immigrants Never Tell You by Dina Nayari. Um, this one has been on my wish list for quite a long time. Uh, I really enjoy nonfiction, well, enjoy is probably the wrong word, but I enjoy learning more about the immigrant experience through memoir and other nonfiction type books. Um, and this one ha I had seen multiple places over the last few years. This book came out, I think, in 2018. Let's just take a peek quickly. 2019, sorry. Um, and it sounds really awesome. Um, Dina Nayari herself, is, she was born in Iran during the revolution and arrived in the United States when she was 10 years old. So she knows of what she speaks. And um, yeah, I am really glad to have found this book used for $5. Kim, you'd be so proud of that one, I'm sure. The next book is another memoir. This is Carrie, A Memoir of Survival on Stolen Land by Tony Jensen. And this is, uh, Tony Jensen is um, a Maidy woman and she grew up in Iowa and her dad was, you know, a hunter or whatever, was into guns. He had a lot of guns and she, so she grew up with guns and she was threatened with guns at Standing Rock. Um, when she was involved in that protest movement. Um, and so it's sort of weaving in essays about her life growing up indigenous and also gun violence. So I will actually, <laughs> I'm going to be reading this in November. I'm very excited to read this book. Um, it's highly recommended by both Karen at Run Right Reads and um, somebody else I just saw and I've already forgotten it and I'm sorry, but um, this is everybody that I've seen that has read this book has loved it. And I... I'm really excited to have my own copy and to be reading that in the month of November. So that is one substitution that I know I'm going to be making um, with my nonfiction November TBR. This is Under a White Sky, The Nature of the Future by Elizabeth Colbert. Um, 
or Colbert. I'm not really sure. I think it's Colbert, actually. I really like Elizabeth Colbert's writing. I read her previous two pieces of nonfiction, um, Field Notes from a Catastrophe and The Sixth Extinction. Um, so she's a very well-known nature writer, science writer. And this is another book about um, climate change. Uh, and because I've enjoyed this author in the past and I saw all of it, a book all of, uh, review this book um, and spoke of it very highly so I knew I would want to read it as well and it is a smaller piece of nonfiction, so that is a positive. The next one I picked up is How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith, A Reckoning with the History of Slavery Across America. Um, Clint Smith is a writer for The Atlantic which you know I subscribe to. I really enjoy his articles and this is a book that talks about how um, the United States has all these monuments and historic places that don't really address the issue of the fact that we enslaved black people to make our economy mm -hmm. grow. Um, and so he goes across the country to different historical landmarks and talks about the legacy of slavery and why and how we talk about slavery at these places and whether or not we do, which is mostly no. Um, and so it's like he goes to Monticello, he goes to um, other plantations um, across the South. He, he goes to a lots of different places and discusses what he finds there and what that means in the broader terms in terms of history of slavery in this country. And I've heard nothing but uh, good things for this. It was nominated for, I believe, the uh, the Pulitzer or the National Book Award. I can't remember which. Um, and I think I'm going to really love that one, though it's probably going to really make me angry. I purchased this piece of classic nonfiction. This is A Nation of Women by Luisa Cap Capitillo. And this is translated by Alan West Duran. Um, and this is early feminist writing um, by a woman uh, who was born in Puerto Rico. Uh, so she was not only a feminist, but also a socialist. And this is a collection of her writings. Um, I've seen a couple of people be speaking about this on Bookstagram and on, um, mostly on Bookstagram, I think. I don't think I've seen anybody on Booktube talk about this one yet. But uh, I do plan to also buddy read this one with Britta at some point, hopefully maybe uh, in the month of November. But if we don't get to it in November, hopefully soon. Um, because we, as you know, are on a quest to read more translated nonfiction by women. Um, so here's something <laughs> fiction-wise. This is a classic. This is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. And this is the last of her um, mainstream publications that I have not yet read. And this is also on my um, bucket list TBR uh, that I filmed, that bucket list tag that I filmed a month or so ago and this is on there. So um, I am excited to read this because I haven't read a Jane Austen in a while and I really enjoy reading Jane Austen's works. Um, Mansfield Park happens to be the last one that I haven't yet read and I know it can be um, some people's least favorite Jane Austen but um, I am still excited to get to it at some point. I've got a very teetering towering stack over there. Um, so I'm going to blame this one on Doris. This is Aya Life in Wap City by Marguerite Abu and Clement Aubure. I'm probably, that was probably terrible and I'm butchering it. And not just Doris. I've seen several people on Booktube talk about this. I believe Britta read this and Mel read this. Lots of people have read this and really enjoyed it. Um, and I am, I just had to be uh, one of those crowd. It sounded so good. It's about, it takes place in the Ivory Coast. I think it's, is it translated? I can't remember if it's translated or not. I can't um, see where it says. It was originally published in English uh, and it was also published in French. So I'm not sure which one it came to, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter, I guess. It's Ivory Coast, 1978. And it's about, um, this is loosely based on Marguerite Abu's youth in Yop City. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very excited to finally find out what this is all about and read more um, graphic novels. A book that I was extremely excited to hear was coming out in the fall was Fight Night by Miriam Taves. I love Miriam Taves. I love, love, love women talking. Um, and uh, her other book that I read, which was... Um, all My Puny Sorrows. I really enjoyed that one as well. 
I really enjoy um, Miriam Taves' voice. I, I think that she writes women so well, especially women's conversation with each other. She has this witty way of writing dialogue and she's just, she's saying so much about um, women's experience of the world in her books. Uh, and um, she also writes a lot about mental health issues. So um, I have heard mixed reviews of this book, but I am still very excited to read about it. This is about uh, Elvira and her grandmother. I'm Swiv and her grandmother, Elvira, excuse me, and their relationship with each other. Um, and yeah, I don't really know much more about it than that. And I don't really want to know any more about it than that. It's Miriam Taves. What else needs to be said, right? It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting there. We're halfway through. <laughs> um, I picked up this essay collection. Um, actually, this is a little bit, not quite an essay collection. There's different types of writing in here. This is Tales of Two Americas, Stories of Inequality in a Divided Nation. This is edited by John Freeman. Um, I had had this on my wish list and I saw it um, used for, again, for $5. And it has, Roxane Gay is one of the contributors to this collection of essays and short stories and poetry. And there's even a piece of um, graphic uh, nonfiction in here. But this has Rebecca Solnit, Denez Smith, Sandra Cisneros, Edwidge Danticat, uh, Richard Russo, Manuel Manuz, um, Claire Bay Watkins, Julia Alvarez, Kise Lamon, Eula Bliss, Joyce Carol Oates, Timothy Egan, um, Anthony Dore, Annie Dillard. I mean, just so many names, like almost every name is somebody I have heard of, Ann Patchett. And so this is all about the, what it says on the tin, inequality in America. Um, anything with Roxane Gay on the cover is going to catch my attention. Um, and this is something that is of the moment and is a topic that I am very interested in reading about. I've read a lot of stuff about inequality in America and um, I continue to find that topic of supreme interest. Surprising exactly no one, I've picked up the biography of Eleanor <laughs> Roosevelt that was written and published last year by David Michaelis. Um, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not. So I am reading... Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's collection of newspaper columns that were published in the 30s and 40s this nonfiction November in this coming month um, and this book was on the book two prize long list it was never in any of the groups of books that I had to read for the nonfiction category of course by the get they didn't make it all the way to the finals um, but I did hear very good things about it from the folks that read this biography. I've never read a complete biography just of Eleanor. Um, I've only read biographies or other pieces of nonfiction where she's been um, part of the uh, what was written about, but not the central person that was being written about. And um, I just admire the heck out of Eleanor Roosevelt, and I want to learn everything about her. Um, so I could not resist this chunky biography when I saw it brand new for $14. I mean, come on, who's going to pass that up? Not me. This is The Beauty in Breaking by Michelle Harper. This is a memoir by a black um, doctor. She, uh, this talks about how she grew up in Washington, D.C. She goes to Harvard. Um, she meets her husband. They make it through medical school together. She gets a job um, in a hospital in Philadelphia, and then her husband tells her he can't be married to her anymore and leaves her basically and so she has to adjust to her new life as a single woman as a medical doctor dealing with everything by herself um and so i can't remember where i first heard about this book um but uh it came out last year in 2020 um and i just think that sounds amazing i i like um sort of medical memoir anyway and anytime you can get a medical memoir by a person of color. Um, I think that's very interesting. This is our author. So um, yeah, I'm really interested to read this one. And also $5 used. I mean, used. I don't believe this bad boy was ever even cracked open. So that was a good deal. Um, another one that I've heard about a lot on BookTube, but it has been on my wish list, but I had never found a copy um, anywhere. But I found it for 
on sale, used for $5. Again, looks brand new. Um, this is The Erratics by Vicki Laveau Harvey. And this is written by an Australian author. Um, she was born in Canada and lived in France and now lives in Australia. And this is her memoir about um, when she was called back to Canada to help care for her ailing parents. I believe her elderly mother gets hospitalized. She and her sister go home um, to help deal with medical issues and help her help their father and find out um, what their father has been going through. Evidently, their father has been being maltreated. Um, so yeah, I think this sounds amazing. I know uh, this was very highly regarded when it first came out. Um, lots of booktubers that I uh, know read this and enjoyed it. So I am excited to get to this one. I really love this cover. That's a very cool cover. Um, I'm running out of room here, so I'll try not to shake the camera when I stack these books up here. Um, I purchased Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmerer because I loved Braiding Sweet Sweetgrass by her last year. Um, I think the way that Robin Wall Kimmerer writes is amazing. She writes beautiful science um, and nature writing type nonfiction. Uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer is also indigenous. Uh, she is, um, I can't remember which tribe she belongs to off the top of my head, but she is indigenous author and she's also professor of um, ecology, uh, plant ecology, I think. Um, and does it say on here? She's a distinguished teaching professor at the SUNY College of Environmental and Forest Biology. And she's the founding director of the Center for Native Peoples and the Environment. Um, and I love braiding sweetgrass. So I want to read everything that Robin Wall Kimmerer writes. And this was the other book that was available by her. I'm sorry, it's so shiny, but um, yeah, it's got moss on the cover. So it is about moss. <laughs> but I am very interested to read that one. One more um, science and nature nonfiction to talk about here. This is Birds by the Shore by Jennifer Ackerman. I read her a previous book, The Genius of Birds, and really loved it. Um, and Jennifer Ackerman writes really great nonfiction about birds. And I was particularly interested in this one because it's about um, shorebirds and marine related things, which is right up my alley. So this one um, talks about her time living in Delaware on the shore. And um, so it not only talks about the marine life and the birds that she encounters, but also sort of her personal memoir of time living in Delaware and sort of her personal life while she was living in that area. Two pieces of fiction here to talk about before we end the... <laughs> book extravaganza here. My daughter bought me for my birthday the brand new Stephen King book, Billy Summers. You guys know I love Billy. Uh, I love Stephen King. I am a fangirl of his. I collect all his books. I read all his books. Um, this is his new one and it looks like it is more of uh, in the mystery thriller genre versus the horror genre. This is about Billy Summers, who is a um, killer for hire, but he only kills um, bad guys, if I remember correct, uh, because he is one of the best snipers in the world. He was he is an Iraqi war vet, and um, he only will kill the target if the target is a bad person. So you you could see how this will probably not go well. Um, love Stephen King's stories, so very very excited to get to that one. Um, but you know my rule, I can't read this Stephen King until he has a new book coming out because I don't ever want to be without, um, a unread Stephen King on my shelf. But I do luckily have his earlier correct, there was a collection of four, um, novellas that I have not yet read. Um, so I can read that and then I can read Billy Summers when I'm done. That's a little weird thing that I do, I know. And then last but not least, um, this is The Student by Carrie Fagan, and I won this in the book giveaway that Sean the Book Maniac hosted because of his anniversary on BookTube. So he sent this to me all the way from Japan, and I'm so thrilled because this is a Canadian uh, piece of fiction, and I could not get it because it's only sold in Canada, <laughs> and the border has been closed for the last year and a half because of COVID. So I couldn't run over to Canada to a bookstore and pick this up. So... 
Sean, it was so awesome when I won this book because I had been dying to get my hands on a copy of it and I could not. So this is, um, I can't really remember what it, this is about, but I remember Sean's review of it made me want to read it immediately. Um, and it is a little slim thing. The only thing is about this book, Sean, you didn't warn me. I don't remember that you warned me that it's that weird kind of deckled edges where it looks like they just ripped the pages off. You know, like serious deckled edges. Not that that's gonna stop me from reading and enjoying the book, but I just find that odd. Anyway, that is my birthday book haul extravaganza. I mean, that is really gonna, I'm not sure how the old TBR check-in is going to go. Stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in a video really soon. Um, but I am very, very excited to have all these new books in my home. And um, I don't think I will be able to stop myself from reading quite a few of them pretty soon. So anyway, I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. And I will talk to you later.